Hello and welcome to another AIC video. So with the last video I did on my AliExpress seven inch laptop, I said something that I've been called out on. And I said that uh, I wouldn't want to edit video on here because it's just too slow and you could spend a lot less money and buy an older generation laptop that would do a much better job. I think I said like a third generation Core i5. Um, I have one of those, but it's not set up right now. Uh, but I grabbed this, which is a X250, which is a fifth gen Core i5. And this has an eighth gen Core i5. You can pick these up for under $100 on eBay right now in pretty decent condition. You could pick up these under $200 on eBay um, on the X280. And this one has the touchscreen and everything. So yeah, about $180. Uh, dollars what I spent on this one. Uh, pretty easy to find for that price. This one's like $300 plus uh, by the time you've paid for shipping everything. So pretty big price discrepancy between them. Um, but I wanted to do a video editing comparison. So first and foremost, uh, I went ahead and pulled benchmarks on these. On the X250, we have a CPU mark of 2981 on the AliExpress 7 inch, we have a CPU mark of 60, or excuse me, 4642. And on the X280, we have a CPU mark of 6481. So kind of a similar gap between each of these laptops. This one being the slowest as far as the benchmark goes, this one being the fastest as far as the benchmark goes. Um, but I wanted to go ahead and actually try to not actually edit a video, just import a video and then export it. This is gonna take me a long time to do. Uh, I hope you appreciate it. Um, I will try to speed up the process, uh, maybe time-lapse it, because there's two things that need to happen. The first thing, um, the program I use, and I'll bring it up here on the X250, is Muvavi. I've been using this for years. Uh, I don't, not necessarily going to recommend it to you to use, but it's fairly inexpensive and fairly robust video editing software um, with a lot of options in there. One thing it does that I like is, well, one thing I don't like is it does show a ton of advertisements. <laughs> um, don't go to sleep on me. I didn't tell you you could go to sleep. There you go. Um, anyways, uh, move Avi. it's inexpensive, it's robust. And one thing it does is it will import the video and make it a smaller video to make it easier to edit. Uh, it takes a long time to do that on slower machines. But when you actually then go to edit, it makes your editing process significantly better. Uh, so it's one thing I like about it. I don't know if other editing softwares do that or not. I don't have a ton of experience with a bunch of different editing softwares. This is the one I bought into and I've stuck with it last, I don't know, five, six years now. So I'll go ahead and on each, I'll go ahead. I won't do it now because I'm going to time it. I'm going to add in that software into each of these, see how long it takes to then encode into that more bite-sized piece for the software. Then I will then export that video. And again, I'm going to time it. So that way we can see how long it takes to do each of those steps. So if you have any questions, leave those down in the comment section down below. Obviously it'll be after the fact that I edit this video, but I will try to answer those and we'll go from there. All right, so I put the same file on each of these computers to uh, try to encode. It's one with my motorcycle. Put that on here. And you see down here, it says optimizing HD clips. Start at 357, and we will see how long this takes. Bring up Task Manager. And for the interest of time, we're going to do the same thing on this computer. We're going to open up the task manager just so we have that going. And 
we are going to open up Mubavi. We are going to open up the video, exact same video. We're going to drag and drop it. Oh. Let's try that again. Okay. So we started that right at 401. All right, same thing as before. Open up Mubavi. Get the stupid advertisement that I keep forgetting about. videos same video and this is like a five did it pop Ugh. of course it did um it's like a five gigabyte file or 4.8 gigabyte file so pretty big video it's in 4k and this one we got started at 402 let's bring up the task manager Let's show, let's do this to all of them. So this has four cores and eight threads running at 100%. Let's look at the other ones. Oh, it's running at 2.9 gigahertz. So it's four cores, eight threads running at three, almost three gigahertz. Not quite 100%. All right, and back to the Express laptop, logical processors, four cores, four threads, all pegged going about two gigahertz. Now it was running faster, uh, and that's one of the problems with this laptop, is it will thermal throttle much more than the other ones. And so for short bursts, it's faster, but I noticed that it will um, slow itself down quite a bit over time. And we'll keep an eye on that here. Um, it's running about uh, two gigahertz right now. All right, and we're back on the X250. This one, we'll switch to logicals. It has two cores and four threads. They're running at about 2.6 gigahertz ish. Um, so we'll keep an eye on these and see how long it takes before they are finished. All right, so the X280 is already done. We started at 4.02, get the cord out of the way. It is 4.10, so that took eight minutes to uh, edit, or not edit, but to encode the video. Uh, pop over to the X250, um, uh, and it also just finished. You can see that drop off right now. And so that started at 50, Seven, and so that is what, 14 minutes, 13 minutes, something like that. And this little guy, it's still going. It is still chugging away. So that right there, you know, if you're doing much in the way of video editing, this is going to take a lot longer. And, and let me show you um, why that's important. So let's go ahead and minimize this. Say we want to scrub through this video right take this i can scrub through you can see how quickly and cleanly that's scrubbing through and that's because it's been optimized if i tried to do this 4k video without doing this it it wouldn't do this oh and here we go it just finished on here as well so that was 401 to 411 so not a ton slower but it definitely was slower Let's see how it scrubs through videos. So it's doing pretty good. Okay. Now what we're gonna do, now that these are done, 
importing, we're going to export these videos as a uh, 4K video. And then we're going to see how long that takes. So let's go ahead and go to the X250. I'm going to export. Uh, new projects fine. We're going to go to advanced because we're importing a 4K video. We're going to export it. Actually, let's export it as a 1080. Why not? Um, H264, which is what this software can do, which is fine. Okay. And we're going to do good quality is fine. Actually, let's do high quality. All right. And we're going to start this at 4. 13. Same thing on this, we're going to do export. We're going to leave it at, we're just going to move it to high quality and hit start. Okay, also at 413-ish. And the last one. Export. High quality and start sounds good so let's go through and see so this one says uh, it's counting down pretty quick eight seven whatever minutes we'll come back to that one in a second we'll come over here this one says it has 13 minutes and 40 ish seconds this one says 10 minutes and this one says seven minutes so we'll go ahead and go down the line as they complete, and we will be back. All right, so we have a few minutes left uh, of the um, exporting of the video, uh, but I wanted to talk about a couple things here real quick that I'm noticing that is probably swaying the favor to the AliExpress over the X250, um, and that is the GPU. So. In the past, when I've tested Celeron processors, the included GPU has been pretty crap. <laughs> They've been uh, basically just barely enough to display text on the screen. But if we look between the three systems, over here we have a 23% utilization of the GPU. It actually has built-in encoding for video encoding into the GPU. Now, this is a pretty old laptop at this point. Um, and so its graphics is also pretty outdated, uh, but it's a significant step above the X250. And it's running at about 17% GPU utilization. I don't think that this is using um, all the encoders it could be using that this one has to its advantage. It's running about 25, 28%, somewhere in there. And so I think that this uh, system is getting a much bigger boost from the graphics unit um, over this. Uh, the X280 still has the performance uh, crown because it just simply has uh, more computing capacity with the um, four cores and eight threads. That's just double the threads that these guys can do, right? So if they run at 70%, you know, they're still way outperforming these two guys as far as this what the cpu can do um, but i think the gpu is able to lift a lot heavier load on this guy because it is built on a much newer platform with a newer graphics um, chip built in the to that cpu so that being said as we get close to our conclusion we have about two minutes left here we have what do we got here? We have about three and a half minutes left here, and we have about seven minutes left here. So, conclusion is that um, in the video I said that you could have a third gen Core i3, I was wrong, completely 100% wrong. But I also said that you should spend the money, and for what you spend on this, if you're going to do, you know, video editing, unless you absolutely have to have the smallest, lightest thing in the world you can buy a lot more computing power for that money um, or spend way less money and still have a much faster system for video editing. So I was, I'm still justified in what I said simply because 
Um, this is probably more expensive than what it should be uh, for, its uh, for its capabilities. Now, what you're paying for is size and convenience. Wherever something gets smaller, you're gonna pay more for it. Um, it's a lot more engineering. It's a fairly niche product. They're not making a ton of these. Like they like these um, ThinkPads, they pump these out like there's candy, right? <laughs> My company buys uh, every year about 4,000 computers and it doesn't even bat an eye. So <laughs> that's a different story. Uh, these guys are much more niche product and so you're paying for that uh, with its price. Uh, but it did fare better, far better than I was expecting. So it did exceed my expectations. Me personally, I would not buy this if, if video editing was my my goal. Now, um, maybe if you have your USB-C dock and you have your keyboard, mouse, full screen, um, you know, full size screen that you're using, um, you wouldn't hate life using this system. You wouldn't. Um, it would do fine for you. Um, but for the price, if you have an option and you have to have a laptop, um, something with an 8th, 8th Gen Core i5 is going to outperform it. Not by a ton, but it will do better. If you can get something with a, um, a dedicated GPU, it'll do even, even better, depending on the GPU you get, because you have even more um, processing power with that GPU. And you could start finding some of the older Dell workstations and ThinkPad workstations with a dedicated graphics card that would outperform these by a decent amount, um, you know, in, in, in this price range. So uh, anyways, hopefully that answers some questions. I was not correct in my initial thing, but I was also correct at the same time that for the money you can get better processing power if you're going to be doing video editing. This is really for something, for somebody that just needs the absolute smallest, lightest, craziest, <laughs> compact notebook that you could buy. Um, and, and it does have some applications. I, I, I traveled with this recently and it was a great laptop for that because I just went in the side of my carry-on suitcase and I was able to have a second computer very conveniently um, because I had my work computer I had to have, but I hate doing personal stuff on a work computer, so this was able to go with me, and I did not have to worry about it at all. Anyways, thank you for watching. Hope you have an amazing day.